Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maximilian Justin Gunawan, and I invite you all to look back to some 20 years past. Some 20 years past, we were at the twilight of the 20th century and standing at the dawn of a new millennium. But some 20 years past, we were also undergoing a tumultuous time of economic peril. The financial collapse of the Thai bot in 1997 set off a chain reaction that damaged other Asian nations. One year later, the Russians experienced a crisis that ended up affecting the economies of our neighboring nations. And across the globe, the United States suffered an eight-month recession, and the United Kingdom underwent what would be called Black Wednesday. Some 20 years passed, the nations of the world, tired and wary of crisis after crisis, formed a forum as an effort to achieve international financial stability. This organization, known as the G20, would have their first G20 summit, and we've begun continuing to do so up until this day. Now, 20 years later, the economic turmoil of the late 20th century to the early 21st century is far behind us. However, the G20 remains as relevant as ever since humanity is facing the wrath of the COVID-19 pandemic. This pandemic has forced us to adapt to changing circumstances. It has damaged the economies of almost all nations across the globe. And it has forced, at least at first, many nations to shutter their borders against the spread of the scourge. Although many nations are starting to reopen their borders nowadays, the impact of the virus on the world still remains. Of course, the virus and its negative impacts on the world are not the only things humankind had had to deal with. For instance, the Russo-Ukrainian war has reignited tensions between East and West. People all across the globe feel uneasy and anxious with the blood that is being spilt at this very moment. Moreover, the fear that another world war could ignite at any moment which could bring the history of humanity to a full stop. We are battered, distrustful of each other, and divided, but we are not broken. Ever since the dawn of man, we have needed to rely on each other in order to survive. With companions working together for a shared goal, our ancestors were able to hunt for food, collectively protect each other, and many other things. I feel I don't need to say that it's been a long, long time since the time of our ancestors. But even now, in a time like this, we need cooperation. Cooperation between each other as individuals. Cooperation between nations. In a fractured world full of distrust and general peril, we need cooperation. And the G20 was founded on the dream of international economic cooperation. This, ladies and gentlemen, is G20's purpose. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why G20 matters. It is a product of the dream of universal cooperation. And in a world of what seems to be constant sorrow, constant distrust, and constant economic peril, we need cooperation. We need G20. On one final note, ladies and gentlemen, if we are to recover from this time of crisis and to be able to come back twice as stronger than before, then we must do so together. What started as a group to provide a solution to our economic crises has become a driving force for international cooperation in resolving all of the problems that we face. Make no mistake, we are still far away from global cooperation and there is still much work to be done. But to believe in G20 is to believe in its dream. To believe that one day 
all shall cast away the chains of their mistrust of each other and unify under the banner of mutual trust and camaraderie and swear that we shall all strive to face man's plights together while there are those that may dismiss this dream as nothing more than a fantasy i urge you all to ask yourselves do we dare to dream and do we dare to strive to turn those dreams into realities? I don't know what your answers are, but I can assure you, the G20s is a firm yes. Thank you.